Hello, and welcome. Ouch, <laughs> that hurt. Welcome to another installment of As Sarah Crashes Into Her Jack Lift. That really hurt my knee. <laughs> I need to put this thing somewhere safe. There, stay. Anyway, I'm going to be doing MR2 stuff in this video. No more crashing into things on my BMX bike. Let's just get right to work. For those of you that are new, this is Mr. Dose, my special boy, and up above is a link to the last video where I worked on him. Everybody else, you know the drill, let's get to work. this right here oh it's about to get confusing let me tell you so this is a fuel pump relay this is a fuel pump resistor this is trash I don't need it it's so the MR2 from the factory had a variable speed fuel pump it would uh, pump harder when it needs it and then go down to a lower speed when not needed it's pointless. I'm completely changing things up in the fuel system with the flex fuel. Obviously, I'm still gonna need a relay for my fuel pump. However, this factory one is part of a complicated and pointless system known as the circuit opening relay. This guy right here. So I'm deleting the circuit opening relay and what I need to do is run power directly from my fuse EFI main relay. It's a 15 amp fuse. This also provides power for the ECU. The circuit opening relay would get its power to distribute out to the fuel pump relay and a couple other things through the EFI main relay, which is also what provides the power for the factory ECU. It is fused with a 15 amp fuse. What needs to take place so that way my fuel pump and my ECU can get a sufficient amount of fused power is I'm going to have to add an additional relay which bypasses the circuit opening relay and takes place of the original fuel pump relay. The Link ECU right here has one signal that sends out to trigger the fuel pump. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make that go to a brand new five terminal 30 amp relay that will be dedicated just for my fuel pump and then get rid of the circuit opening relay and all that confusing crap. Hello, welcome. Welcome to another day. It's time to confuse ourselves more. So what this is right here that I just drew on the whiteboard is this right here. This is EA3, also in the game. This sends out wires to other various sensors that don't go to the ECU. So that's part of the original engine harness that I actually need, not something that I'm creating new for the standalone ECU because it's separate. That means I need to tear apart the original engine harness and take out this right here, EA3, because this had no creepy green death on it. Basically what this harness right here does is all of the indicators on the gauge cluster that illuminate for conditions in the engine, this is what triggers it. With the exception of a couple wires that have to do with the test connector because this is a pre-OBD2 car and I'm getting rid of that because it won't work with the new ECU. This is EA3 right here and the corresponding sensors it attaches to. And luckily this one does not appear to have any creepy green death on it like some of the wires on that harness did. Before I can go ahead and start installing this on the engine, there are two circuits right here that do not belong to anything that I need. One of these is for the cold start injector and then the other one is the start time injector. Both of these are being deleted. This is no longer gonna have a cold start injector. It's being replaced with an IAT sensor instead because the new ECU requires one of those. 
There are some savages in the automotive community that would just cut this wire, but the correct thing to do is to depin it. I shared a little bit of this on my Instagram story and I actually had someone leave a comment saying that I should just hurry up and finish the car so I can drive it. But that's the problem with internet builds. People don't realize the amount of time and research and proper work that goes into building a project car. You can't half-ass or rust this shit if you want your car to be reliable and enjoyable to drive. This one goes out to everyone who appreciates not half-assing your project car. that out there it's already 8 30 at night I didn't even touch the camera for like four hours I just stopped paying attention to doing my job as YouTube I don't even eat lunch Charlie was kind enough to bring me dinner because I just I work and I don't stop I made progress though okay so what I just spent all day doing is this right here, EB1 and EA3. These two harnesses are the last pieces that connect to the engine. Normally though, those two harnesses would come down the side of the fuse box in a massive loom that went just kind of out throughout the engine bay and it was kind of ugly. What I did was remove that from existence. So if you notice, these two harnesses are now going to tuck underneath the fuse box and enter the trunk underneath the ECU where it's routed back out into the engine bay through this other plug. When this is all done, this will be the only point of entry for wires to the engine. So it'll be nice and clean back here on this firewall. No relays assembled back here, just nice and clean. Nothing at all attached to it and then all these wires will be tucked up under the fuel rail and underneath the coolant tree in little harnesses. It's really late though and I want to get some sleep. So, manana! I think the easiest way to do this is to yell at you from over here instead of bringing the camera closer and see how long I need the wires to go cut them down here and then bring it up and put the plug on because this would be ridiculous trying to put the plug on down here. All right, so those guys are gonna go right here and tie in. There, this thing takes forever. Go down. Down and you shall be my new alternator wires. I totally forgot about this. You're not gonna be able to charge a battery without the actual cables that do the charging. Ugh. This stuff is so soft. I got baking soda. Where are you? There it is. And another one. Look at that. That one came out perfect. I'm getting good at this. Not like it's very hard. There. Alternator plug. Done. I'm getting creative with naming wires on circuits. Check engine. Good. I've been here working on this car for already six hours and I've probably filmed like two minutes of today's footage. That's how dedicated I am to just getting this done. I'm gonna be amazed if this thing actually fires up first try when I got everything hooked up. I still have to go in with a laptop and tell the ECU what all these circuits are gonna do. You remember early on in this video I was talking about the fuel pump relay and how I was gonna have to add a brand new relay? 
to get rid of this. I have a crazy idea that I think I can pull off that's gonna be super clean. The circuit opening relay is a relay. I, I have a relay right here that's not gonna be used anymore. So I'm just gonna hack the wiring on the backside and make this my new fuel pump relay. So that way I don't have to add another one. Terminal three and five on the circuit opening relay, I'm just gonna discard, don't need to worry about that. All I'm gonna have to do is use three terminals inside here. I'm gonna wire an auxiliary input from the ECU to terminal four, and then I'm gonna have terminal one the switched side will go to the fuel pump, and then the top terminal, I'm gonna run a brand new 15 amp fuse to go to that relay. That way I'm not overloading the EFI main relay, which is taking care of the cam lum blah, 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 and the ECU. Sometimes you have to cut it. I have that OT Genesis song stuck in my head and I cannot get rid of it. Every time I cut a f***ing wire, all I hear is sometimes you need to cut it. I'm, this is the video where you see me start to lose my mind. That's what this is. I gotta cut it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, what is this wire for? Oh, okay. It's sad seeing the teeter tot in the background just sitting there and it doesn't get any love, but I'm only one human being. I can only work on one car at a time. I think I should just throw a clutch in that thing and just drive it. Just send it, just drive the hell out of it, take it to the track and just beat on it. If you guys are okay with me just doing that, throwing a clutch in that car and then just driving the hell out of it, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I'll just do that instead of trying to go OCD spectacular on it and painting it, making it perfect. Here's that blue tin foil. It's pretty. Unwrap this wire burrito. Man, a burrito sounds so good right now. Cut this one. There. Cut it. I cut it. I really, I'm legit losing my mind. I swear. I don't ever want to do another wiring a project again for at least another three weeks after this is done. I decided not to put a plug for the crank trigger down on the bottom of the car because if I have a plug to disconnect it down there, that just seems like it'd be a recipe for uh, moisture potentially getting into the system, having it that low to the ground by the rear wheel. So, makes weird noises. Come on, tire. Tuck into that wheel well. I almost forgot one important part, TVIS. Some people believe you should just delete TVIS I am of the party that wants to keep it. Basically, the way the TVIS works is there's a vacuum actuated solenoid that this is going to trigger. And at 4,200 RPM, it opens up some butterflies in the intake manifold and allows more airflow. And uh, now that I got a standalone, I can potentially control when I want those to open. There, done. I have to stop. This is enough for this video. I was trying to get all this wiring done in one video, but that's just psychotic. It's already almost 11 o'clock at night, but I don't have much left. I'm like so close. Just to give you guys a little bit of perspective on this and where I'm at, everything I've put a blue square around means that circuit is done, complete, wired up with a plug on it, ready to go. So I don't have a lot left. The cruise control, I can't do anything about. I'm gonna have to get aftermarket cruise thing for knock sensor, speed sensor, O2 sensor, AC, and then there's a couple more signals left for the injectors and the coil packs from Loom B. So it's not nearly as bad as Loom A. It's just a few wires from Loom B and then everything is wired up. The next video you guys see on this car, I do have something else special that I'm gonna be doing inside this engine bay on the car. I got a couple special things, visual upgrades that I'm gonna be doing in here that I was kind of waiting and saving for when I go to start this car. I'm, I'm really close. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now. The bulk of the wiring's done. I didn't do the relay today. The relay is gonna be not a big deal. I just gotta move a couple wires around on there. And uh, then Loom B. I'll be able to drive this thing. I hope. I hope. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye!